Good afternoon, this is Carrie Bullock, and this is our lecture um, based on our William Badke. Uh, he's the author of our main text for the course, LRNR30, uh, for the research strategies. And this little presentation is, uh, is his, written by him. Uh, and is licensed to William Badke. But I really like it because it tells a lovely narrative of the information journey. So we'll just scroll through because it's gonna hit on some of the uh, main concepts, the threshold concepts that we use for our class called the ACRL framework. And this uh, um, really defines the main features of scholarship. And uh, these, so when we talk about threshold concepts, a threshold concept is a significant underlying idea that guides action and it opens the door to great things. So looking at our first framework, authority is constructed and contextual. Uh, and when we construct authority, um, we have agency in that process. So what I mean by that is it's on us. So we make the choice about what we use in our own scholarly process. Um, it's also uh, part of the context of a particular community and um, meets a particular information need. So um, a simpler way of, of thinking about authority might also be author, authorship, sponsorship, and expertise. So a scholar speaks out of an academic discipline with its own rules and methods. Uh, for me, I would speak from uh, library science or information science. An official speaks out of the authority given by his or her position. So a politician speaks on behalf of the leadership of the city. And an observer speaks out of experience. And I think that's a really important one. So say a newspaper article or an interview with a famous musician, they speak about an experience that they had and this, these can be viewed as primary sources. Um, information can be published in a variety of formats and it doesn't affect the authority. So when we say that, it, uh, an example of that would be a book. A lot of books these days, uh, you know, they're, they're electronic. You can download them on your Kindle. You can open them up uh, on the internet. Um, these are still books. Their depth of information is still the same. Also, information develops in contexts that are like ecosystems. So we'll look at that little niche learning a niche ecosystem of information in a moment. And then we need to ask ourselves those questions. Do I understand why I should trust or not trust this particular piece of information? So moving forward to information creation is a process. And uh, this, is, this is what we will be in, d discovering as we delve and uh, introduce ourselves to exploratory topics, um, as we delve into the wide range of methodologies and we need to recognize that to find information value we need to evaluate both its purpose and its content so is there any bias uh, why is that piece being published so a good way to understand that is grasping uh, grasp the opportunities and limitations in information creation uh, some information can only be disseminated so fast. If it's an in-depth book, uh, it needs to go through the entire publishing process. If it's a scholarly journal, it goes through peer review. Those things take time. They allow for greater rigor, but it also means that uh, they aren't reporting on events as quickly. Google is an excellent example of how um, uh, particular sources uh, determine the type and quality of the information you find. Uh, for example, Google uh, is sponsored by ads and companies pay a lot of money for their result to float up first. So every time that you're searching Google and you see something come up first, please be critical and skeptical about why it's coming up first. So moving on to information has value. So when we talk about uh, value, we can think of it as a commodity. We can think of it in the means of education, as a means of influence, as a means of advancing in the world. So as a means of influence, who's got the microphone? Who's got the bully pulpit? 
Um, who can send out their message all the time? Who's got the money to uh, run the narrative? And a good example is a library database. This one is called Elsevier database and they are a premier uh, uh, information aggregator. So that means that they, they pick and choose the best resources in the business, journals, academic associations, medical journals, uh, all, the, all the ways that the top tier um, uh, academics communicate and they bring them together and make them searchable. We'll be looking closely at our equivalent, EBSCO. And they began to get a little too, you know, big for their britches and, and were overcharging the universities. And so uh, the UCs got together as a uh, University of California system, got together as a group and said, uh-uh, we're not gonna do it anymore, bye. And now Elsevier is in big, big trouble. So there's this uh, balance as well between, you know, I talked about that bully pulpit, I talked about who's got the microphone. And it's also very important for a lot of these top tier universities to be R1s, which means that they're a research one university. They get all the research prestige. They get all the research grants. They get all the money. They're um, scholars get all the accolades and emeriti awards and the Nobel Prizes, etc. It's also about what is, are we able to uh, push our legitimacy as a nation forward? Uh, people look to the United States to be a leader in medicine and um, uh, chemistry and uh, aeronautics. And these, these are ways that also uh, push our, our economics. Um, and also there is a real value to society as well. And we'll be talking about that in a little more critical lens in a bit. Um, so research as inquiry. So inquiry, discussion, um, research is just, is not just a matter of finding and summarizing ex existing information. Um, it's a quest to solve, to resolve an issue or problem. So there's different ways to pose that question and we can use um, multiple viewpoints, um, create questions, collect data. An example is a research problem statement. So this particular um, organization, Fragile Families and Child Wellbeing, uh, they put forward a study where they observed, uh, you know, X amount of families and um, applied a, um, a certain, maybe a survey, and then once those surveys came in, they, they analyzed that data and they were able to, um, uh, this was this, their determination, uh, their research problem. We can also look at a hypothesis. So a hypothesis is uh, when you're putting forward a solution. So in this case, um, uh, this uh, um, Alvik, and um, Alan and Lindemann uh, propose a, um, a increased likelihood of scoring in the abnormal and borderline range, the total emotional SDQ, right? So basically what they're saying is that, hey, we, we did some data aggregation and this is what we found and this is the solution to the problem that we're proposing. So all of this, kind of leads into this scholarship as a conversation. As you may have heard me talking, I, I mentioned some pretty big, you know, heavy hitters, politicians. I mentioned, you know, the scholars and uh, chemists and these and, and scientists and, and doctors. This uh, is a conversation. And um, the way that we push knowledge forward is we are critical of that information. Um, so while you may think that it sounds all the same, it is actually uh, nuanced and builds on the other, um, can identify the conversation, its main points of view and its main players, and understand what an issue is bound up with an ongoing conversation. Um, right, so we need to understand the background of that, of the topic. So our, our topic will 
um, uh, context context of the top of the conversation, and then we can start looking for the more granular, the the niche conversations within. So as you can see, Dickinson agrees with Jones. Jones has found that, blah blah blah. But Smith says that Corbin finds some value, but Blackstone thinks it's all garbage. However, they feel what this does when we write our papers, those guys, or women, sorry, um, they are cited here. They're the big players. They are the top of their field. And a really strong example of research is when you are able to identify your experts in the field and highlight how they, what information they're presenting and how it works, how their model works for pushing your research forward. Debating is also that same idea. Criticism, um, debate, it will examine, it will provide uh, um, objective information uh, that's seen through another expert lens. Um, and then we come to searching as strategic exploration. All right, so again, searching for information is not a straight line. It's recursive, meaning we, we move forward and then we move the dial back. You know, it's never, we don't go all the way back to the beginning because we've, we've gotten information and some knowledge moved up to that point, but um, it's never a straight line. So you may have to drop a line that, of inquiry that is not working, or maybe you eventually decide that you do like it. Uh, having a good understanding of the tools available to you is very, very helpful. And we've already started taking our steps in that direction with Boolean operators, using truncation, quotation marks around phrases, and or not, um, and planning your research path as well, which is something that we're gonna uh, get into module two deeply. And then finally, uh, don't panic when you see that there's no results. Oftentimes, it's the spelling. Google is amazing for that. You never have to, in fact, my spelling has become worse because of Google, because I'm always going out there and double checking my spelling and then copying and pasting it into the database search boxes saves a lot of time. So don't get frustrated when you get nothing. Try out some of those other limiters. Try out a Boolean operator like or. Or will broaden your results and will make it narrow. All right. So in summation, scholarship is a quest, an adventure into a problem or issue, a journey with others who join the conversation, an expedition that demands good methods critical thinking and retracing of steps and a path to discovery and advancement. So guys, that's it. I try to keep it short. And I think that um, as we wrap up our first module, as we come to a conclusion with our, our introductory and identifying our information need, I really wanted to show you where we're going. It, um, it may you know, be a step forward or a step back. It may seem repetitive at times, but as we're gonna see, that's how we build those neural pathways. So stay tuned and I look forward to seeing you in the classroom.